All right, so in today's video, what we're going to check out is how to structure data science project. Um, so if you're working on a web app, um, desktop app, mobile app, you kind of have a structure that you follow, right? But as soon as you get into a data science uh, project, it can like it can be anything really like uh, especially if you're like it's a research data science project it's usually the wild west so i'm going to show you today a cool repository i found so it's cookie cookie cutter data science um and it's um, a fairly uh, good um structure for a data science project so um this is mainly python stuff so um you install your yaf pip and stuff and stuff so you install cookie cutter so then you got it good and then you um you uh, set up your new project by just uh, calling cookie cutter so you've downloaded the stuff you can download it again if you want to and then you set your, your project name let's say i'm doing like some uh, deep learning deep learning image recognition stuff um, so your repo name, you set it, you set your other name. So this is me, uh, description, uh, this is a test. Um, let's go with MIT, uh, there's no bucket, uh, there's no AWS profile and it's Python tree. Um, and then there you go, you have the stuff. Um, so if you go into the deep learning thing and uh, you open up your uh, code editor, um, this is what you will see. You see that there, you have a few folder over there, and then you have your um, your, your general um, uh, kind of file that you you have. Um, it's it's actually fairly good. So the data thing over here is where you put your data, um, and if you look into the Git inner, uh, it's what the one one of the thing that uh, you don't um, you won't commit uh, to your repository. So your data stays in in local. You put it there. Um, yeah. Then you have your docs. Uh, let's actually go into um, this. So um, you go over there. Yeah, so you have your data over here. So um, the way they work is that um, um, you have an, uh, an original data dump and then you will um, modify the data uh, in multiple steps. The one thing that can mess up your project and your whole analysis is if people start to um, uh, take the raw data and change it and overwrite it. As soon as this is done, it's a mess. Um, like you will not know how the the end result came to be, and you will not be able to backtrack. So um, the original raw data need to stay um, there, and then you make script in order to uh, refine it, preprocess it. Um, so this is this is very important. Um, this is one of the most important thing. And then like the pre the process thing is where you where you like the end thing that you do to um, use it for modeling. Um, yeah. And then if you need data from third party source, it goes over there. But this is usually the data that you recorded. You have the readme, you have the make file. Um, if you're not a big make uh, fan, you don't have to do it. But this is how to um, um, like um, create your project. And uh, um, let's say, for example, make data you can uh, uh, shoot the script in order to go from raw to persist. So the only thing you really have to give to other people is the raw data. And uh, as soon as this is done, uh, they, they, they should be able to go from the raw to the process and just run the whole thing. Um, good, so uh, this thing use um, uh, Sphinx. So um, for those that don't know, uh, Sphinx is like a, a um, it's like a documentation generator. And this is actually very useful to have uh, uh, live inside the code. One other, uh, after the data, another thing that I've seen that is really poor in uh, like research project uh, repository in general is the documentation about what the hell is happening there. Um, so uh, by having this um, uh, live within the code, you it's way easier to, to have the two uh, stay in sync. Uh, you could do something else like have the code lives somewhere in the documentation somewhere else. But what will happen is that you will uh, update the code way often than the documentation. And at some point, you're like way far off over here and then documentation is stale and then people are looking at your documentation and they're gonna ask you a question why this is not working, right? Well, when the documentation um, lives within your code, 
uh, you, you, you can have no choice but to update it like you will update your comments you, have, you, will, you update your readme file and stuff um, so uh, this is great because you can actually publish your documentation uh, to be um, directly accessible from the web so this is great um, you can look at the files but this is like a, f a fairly normal um, uh, sphinx kind of setup so that's what you have. Then you have your model. Um, so this is where you you put them. So if you um, so if you if you train and pickle them, you can put it there. Um, and they are usually fairly small. So even if you commit them to your repository, it doesn't make more doesn't doesn't matter. The data you don't want to commit because it's fairly big. Um, but like the model, I think it's fine. Then there is the notebook, and this is where most of the work happens um, because like. If you look at the Flask, a React app, or whatever, um, there's only one thing, which is the web app. Everything else, like helper files and stuff, it's it's they they like it's 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 part of this big blob. But in a research data science project, you don't know how you're gonna get from point A to point B. So um, you're trying a bunch of stuff, and at some point, maybe point B was not the way to go. Um, so uh, all all this to say, like. There, we, there is some sort of um, of uh, um, exploration that need to happen all the time, uh, so you need to structure this. So the way they 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 said to structure is you put numbering at the beginning to order, in order from from the first thing that you did, like you you got the data, you don't know anything about the data set, to like the last exploration with your model and stuff. Um, so you order them like this. You put your initials so that people know who made this. Um, you can check with the blame, but if two people start to, to touch the same notebook, so this is like the owner of it, and then just a small description. Um, I feel that this is this is good um, because you need the, the ordering, otherwise it's a mess. Um, you need to know who did that in order to ask question, and you need to have some sort of idea about what's happening. Um, I usually say something like exp um, one whatever, and then. The, the description but I feel that this is is a bit more uh, uh, clean um, so a reference so uh, the documentation that you're using you put in there or paper or whatever um, so this is the report um, this is um, this is great um, I did something similar and uh, uh, like uh, organically for in one other of my research project and um, this is this is useful because what you want to do is, um, like let's say you're in the research setting, what you want to do is people actively looking at your code and looking at where at one place, right? You don't want to start like sending emails um, with, um, with, with report, with figures, uh, because it can get really messy really fast, right? And then after that, you have to, people will send you information back and stuff. Like having, having everything centralized into one spot, the whole documentation, the whole... Um, tracking system of, uh, of issues, uh, the whole reports and figures uh, into one spot is really, really powerful. Um, so um, however you generate them, I think having them there and then having the figures live directly into the repository um, allow you to always have some con kind of control about what's happening um, in, the, in, the, in the analysis. And then it kind of force people to take a look at the code if like, um, they're not sure about something and about the implementation of X. Just take a look. Don't not, don't ask me. You can you can literally see whatever I was doing, um, and everybody uh, will be able to better understand. So it forces you to be um, more upfront about like uh, uh, what your intent in your code, and it forces the other people um, that not are not necessarily like uh, always coding um, to read the report and then check the code if they know how to read it. So this is another thing that is important. So the requirement of txt, um, so, so that people can can launch the whole analysis um, in their un, uh, environment. Um, and I feel like this is um, this is great for Python, but like when you when you run into MATLAB stuff, this is where it's usually a mess. Um, and this is why I prefer would much prefer Python um, than MATLAB for um, uh, uh, academic kind of research. So this is set up the PI. So this is to make it pip installable. So uh, like sometimes you don't actually want to do that. Um, sometimes you do. Um, so like like this, uh, if like someone 
doesn't have to pull your repository install it in their own uh, thing they can just do pip install and then your name like let's say Yassine uh, deep learning image recognition whatever they will be able to directly install it um, so um, if you're doing their your whole work can in the open this is great um, but this is not the case in most uh, lab uh, this is a part that I think is lacking in a lot of a uh, of a project um, usually they stop at the notebook stuff or like script stuff um, but you actually want to reuse um, some code and extract it so that you can use it somewhere else or within the same notebook otherwise you're gonna have a lot of repetition um, so um, as soon as you have you found something that is uh, useful in your code uh, you can extract it and then put it into this uh, source folder um, and this is this is this is very really useful because after that every notebook you're going to do will be uh, shorter and shorter and easier to understand um, so uh, you have a bunch of scripts so to make the data so this uh, so here you have the data uh, folder with the make data set so this is to download it and do like the minimal amount of processing in order to make it like okay in order to generate the feature and then the, this is the build feature um, kind of setup uh, where you take the um, the raw or the minimally processed data and, and like turn it into something that is um, usable for uh, the models um, so uh, in, in here you could have other uh, function that goes there if it's like very difficult to if it's like a fairly big data set and stuff um, and then you have the modeling step uh, where you use um, a train model API this is where your your training stuff goes and predict model is how you use the model that you generated over there that's pretty much it and then everything that is visualization please put it over there um, one thing that I, fi I found that uh, make the um, data science uh, code messy is when you have the um, pre-processing the modeling and the figures all mangled into one um, like if you're looking at a flask or a web app you have the model view controller kind of setup right you always have the separation between the three and I feel that it's super important in um, in data science too because then it, it makes like the reasoning about all of this is simpler and it separates uh, processing from visualization. So in your visualization, you won't have something like where you you're messing around with data frames, um, and that's that's good because it will m make you something that is usable everywhere else. So let's say you have a scatter plot that look like something, uh, then you can reuse it. it uh, it uh, promote reusability um, and make the code generally cleaner when you have the separation between the three um, and then you have this um, I never used talks I uh, used PyTest before um, but uh, this is to test your stuff so you will be able to write tests um, and you should write tests for uh, your um, uh, your data science projects it's a bit more difficult um, because it's a bit less dis deterministic but if let's say you're you're setting up an algorithm or you just want to make sure that um, whatever uh, function that you're using is correct um, um, and has some basic properties so for instance uh, um, in the uh, brain project that I was doing uh, you had uh, like the uh, a specific metric that could not be negative make sure that it cannot be negative um, so make a test for that so by doing this you you're you're making sure that your project doesn't have some weird bug that you don't see and then at the end of the like as you you're ready to publish something comes up and then you're uh, you're in trouble um but that's it that's 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 pretty much it and i've used it over here uh, this is for like a toy data set uh, of heart disease um and um i didn't use all of the functionality yet um but it's 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 fairly nice um to even for yourself keep everything structured like that um so I highly recommend I've put I'm gonna put this into the description so um, you can take a look at it and if you have any uh, strong opinion about any of this about how to structure data science code please leave them into the discussion uh, the comment section and I will be happy to discuss with you so that's it have a great uh, rest of the week everyone <laughs>